And the last one is called Following Our Conversation. Call that the trace of memory, the trace of private speech. What is it that hasn't happened? What is it that matters, exists really? These spoken, written, sung things? Or the formless echo you can recreate music with? What attention, or rather, what distraction? Following our conversation the other day, a buzzing started, like a wasp's nest inhabited by a single wasp, old and very cautious. Found out she would be done for, she knows it. With no guarantor, her bustling activity is no longer justified and stops as soon as someone's listening. She can feel it. Sometimes the buzz of the fridge provides a cover or perhaps the pff of pipes in the wall or the neighbor's hoover. The voice migrates towards them. A pianist hums mechanically the monophonic, mental, mushy version of what his fingers are playing. Imagine two hands blurred as one, a thumb on each side, a reverse shot doubly exposed. What a muddle. Yet, at least one thread, just one sound, keeps on behind a clear dialogue, its perfect execution, like a shameful pirate shadow. Call that the trace of memory, the trace of private speech. After days and nights in the studio, balancing the sound, going slowly mad, you put the tape in the car park bloody freezing on an ancient car radio. What's happened? What is it that hasn't happened? Doubtless one part of the pre-recorded debate was cut down more than the other broadcast out to one of the debaters lounging in his socks, his tie undone by his set. And even if deep inside he thinks the other man's right, you can bet that the most contorted arguments aren't his. In the street this morning, the well-dressed man waving his, his handkerchief before his mouth to hide the furious statements directed within seems to me to let just one predominate. What counts most? What is that matters? What is it that matters, exists, really? These spoken, written, sung things? Or the formless echo when you turn your head? The subliminal choi, 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 choir? How do you say that? Choi, choi? I don't know how to do this. Though. The subliminal Choir? Choir? Chore? Okay. The subliminal chore where it sits at the back. The echo is feeble, its peak low, but it isn't simple. One fold. You can unfold it in the labs, receivers of the creased, damp, faded dollars that have been through the wash in trouser pockets. You can make music with it, right on the back of a shopping list, not just silly bits of conversation, but their sillier prolongations. What attention, or rather, what distraction is necessary to hear nothing but the background noise and not aggravate the secret studio behind the trompe l'oeil wall, the little hands and archaic machines whisked away at the drop of a hat on the slightest suspicion of descent or slightly lengthened stare? It's not the hunter but his apathetic double lurking like him, unarmed, who picks up more than hairs, the cock chaffers that come and go as the terrier appears, the flies on the eyes of the young, and the brook beneath a sleeping grass. He doesn't see things anymore. He sees what populates their shadows, earth subproletariat, smoke heavier than air, that lingering protects the Hebrews' houses. It keeps predators away, the masters who can only make out upright bodies, clear, high voices, for that's their nature. They recognize murmurings that rise, but not those that drop, nor the theoretical wake left by events which neither desire nor deserve to be remembered. 
There is nothing more difficult than locating the source of a sound, resonance aside. And what can you say about a mental wave clouded by neighboring frequencies? What follows? No, the remainder of a remainder, vague relatedness, no longer interests most people. The last lines were muffled by the springs of the fold-down chairs. Drop by drop, the room emptied out into darkness, leaving only those held back by a personal grief, hoping for an encore, eternal widows of eternal husbands. But you don't encore machines. One day, on the phone, the invisible interlocutor will hold good, it won't be like in bad films when you see the actor reciting the suspension points in the script that he's speaking to avoid. Here, the voice will be there, rolled tight into an ear, a sound band ready to reply to all your questions, but quite right, its responses will all be foreseeable. That's what you expect when a man dies. We'll have to make do without the main document no one knew about when he was alive, but that's missing in the archives. And the wiretapping system we forgot to unplug will sing on loop. Luckily, I can give you back your shaded sentences. It's not very inviting, but you'll turn it to your advantage, or you won't. And either way, it will be perfect, perfect. Very good, very good. That's it. So have a great discussion with him. I have to go. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> we'll manage. <laughs> okay. He's gone. <laughs> Yeah. So the last, the last narrative that you read to us, you talked about memory, and early, earlier this afternoon we talked about represent, representation, and, and how do you, as a writer, prevent from representing? You know, when you're when you're working with memory and mnemonics or mm -hmm. thoughts in the narrative. I mean, what's is, is, is there like a, an edge or a point that that you have to? It's not the main, and it's not the main point anyway to represent the contents of memory. If you're talking about memory, I think it's rather what what's uh, how it works and how it alterates things, and and mostly loss actually. So, for instance, this poem about you know trying to make something out of very vague remnants of a conversation. I don't really represent any of it. I guess it's just the feeling of the loss itself, and the, the, you know this this kind of mental operations around it, rather than the content. So it's a good trick not to have to you know ask yourself these questions about you know how to represent and describe well and do justice to it, because I'm not really interested in the contents of, the, of whatever it is. It's, it's rather a movement that, that can be repeated, rehearsed in writing that is analogous, I guess, to, to, to memory. But it's not a thing, you know, it's not, it's not really, yeah. It would be different if you had to, you know, to, to, to tell of a character who has specific memories and explore them, but, but it's not the case in, in poems at least.